From tape, CDs, DVDs, to our publication, Voices from His Excellent Glory, Declaring the Kingdom, write P.O. Box 21516, Hot Springs, Arkansas, zip 71903. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. This is the 2016 Thanksgiving Camp Meeting being held at Lake Hamilton Bible Camp in Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas. Friday afternoon, November the 25th, 2016. David Knees is the speaker of the afternoon teaching on Refined in Our Fire. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Father. We love you. Lord, we, we give you honor. We recognize you right now, Lord. It's not about us. Lord, it's not about even what we think we need out of life, Lord. It's about... It's about your kingdom, Father. Yes. It's about you coming and establishing your kingdom, Father, in the earth. Yes. Lord, I just pray that you would remove me, Father, and you would come and speak your holy word, Lord. Yes. Speak it in brokenness, Father. Speak it out of the heart of God, Lord. Lord, I just pray that you would animate me, Father. Speak life into me, to them, Father. And I just pray that you would help me to remember everything you've told me and to speak freely as I've been given, Lord. We praise you and we bless you, Father. We thank you for your Son. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Well, the word I have for you today is uh, refined through the fire. And... God is going to bring you through your trials. Not away from your trials, but to be changed through it. But to be changed in the midst of our our trials. He He can't change a situation around us. And then expect us to be all cleaned up. We have, we have to be changed in the midst of all of this. All, in the midst of all of what's going on, our fears. Uh, turn the TV on and you'll get an earful of it. But he's, he wants to silence all that and deal with you today. About bringing you through the trials. Changing you despite the circumstances. We got to get our eyes off the flesh, off of what we see with our own two eyes. We we so bad want physical things to change, but until He changes our hearts, we can't do anything. Amen. We can't voice anything. We can't uh, do anything apart from Him in the heart of God and having a new heart, resurrected heart. Amen. If if. Uh, if you're not speaking to others, ministering to others out of the love of God that's been shed abroad in your heart, what are we saying? It's got to be the love of God. It's got to be the light that shines within us, that He's He's speaking through us. It's got to be something that He's telling us to do out of obedience, because if He's not telling you to do it, it's not obedience. We gotta hear him say to do it, and we gotta hear him speak the words so that we say what he says. Heaven and earth will pass away, this world, this this flesh, America, it will all pass away, but my words will not pass away. He said, I'm with you, even until the end of the age, that I'm with you. God's gonna bring you through your trials, for he is with you. He's not leaving you. He has a purpose for everything that's happening, everything that's going to happen. There's a, there's a season, there's a purpose, there's a word for somebody, there's a word for you tonight. If you'll hear him, if you'll hear him pleading with your heart. Uh, let's turn to Zechariah 13. Thank you, Jesus. It's right before Malachi, right before the New Testament. Zechariah 13. Thank you, Jesus. 
13, 1, In that day there shall be a fountain open to the house of David and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem for sin and from cleanliness. And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will cut off the names of the idols out of the land, and they shall no more be remembered. And I will cause the prophets and the unclean spirits to pass out of the land. Uh, skip down to verse 7, chapter 13. Away go sword against my shepherd, and against the man that is my fellow. Saith the Lord of hosts, smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered, and I will turn my hand upon the little ones. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. And I will bring the third part through the fire, and I will refine them as silver is refined, and I will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name, and I will hear them, and I will say, It is my people. And they shall say, the Lord is my God. He's, gonna, he's, he's giving you this trial now so that you can come through and that he'll fill you with his Holy Ghost and power and you'll have a wellspring, a wellspring that never runs dry. Speaking of Christ, the fiery, the fiery trial that laid before him at the cross. Paul said to think in light of what he endured for us so that it makes our trials not seem so unbearable, like we can't get over them, like the whole world's coming apart. We'll, we'll get strength if we fix our eyes on what He did, what He went through at the cross. He went through it so that we become one with God. He's going to see if you really meant what you said. All the things you say, you will be held accountable for. Um... I mean, it really should put the fear of God in us. That, that what we say, He will hold us to it. We hold Him to His Word, He's going to hold us to our Word. And we make mistakes, but it's, it's not a game uh, to see how free you can get, how you can play the system, what you can maybe weasel around and not confess, or uh, maybe how free you can get but not, by not really crucifying the flesh. He's trying to test what you think and what you claim to have. He gives to those who ask of Him. Uh, he who lacks wisdom, let him ask. Uh, if you're lacking in things, you, you're not understanding why you're getting free. Maybe you need to stop playing games. Maybe um, we're going to have to crucify our flesh if we're wanting to, get to be set completely free. He who began a good work in you is faithful and just to complete it. So he's going to see you through your trial. He's not going to leave you in it, but he will expose you. If you get in the flesh, he will. He, he's a loving father. He'll expose you trying to do it yourself and pull yourself up by your own bootstraps. Um, it was never his plan for us to just flail around and do it without knowing Scripture, without knowing Christ, without knowing His Son, and without knowing something about the Holy Spirit. We have to know who the Holy Spirit is, how He operates, in order to get people through their trials and get through our own trials, and to not crumble under the pressure of the enemy or the pressures of this world. He's going to see you through. He's going to see you through. Uh... Victory um, through through this fire, he wants to give you victory from the lust of the flesh. Amen. Through your trials, um, we have to learn how to daily crucify our flesh, Amen. bear your cross. There's a, there's a great song that I've been listening to, and at the at the end it says, uh, "Bear your cross as you wait for the crown." And uh, that about wraps it up. We need to bear our cross as we wait for the crown and not whine about it. Um, there's another gospel being preached. It, it's not denying yourself. Jesus said, anyone who's going to come after me must deny himself and take up his cross. We have too many doctrines on how we can sin, how we're free, or... Um, we need to be we need to be more worried about about purifying our hearts 
and burning with a pure, a pure flame, being gold trod and tested, silver put through the fire, um, that, that comes, comes out being useful for His purpose. Um, broken so that we can be poured out. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. When you get to the place where He can deal with your desires, um, I think then we can really begin to see a change of saying, I desire none in the earth beside Thee, and He can be glorified in us. Um, We'll never walk in the power of His victory until we desire Him above all things, above all knowledge, above all success. Um, it's, It's until we're and even some of you are struggling with flesh. We all are. We're all in this together. Don't think that any man has completely... We're still in this body. We're, we are still uh, bound by our flesh. But there's a choice that we have in it to crucify it and crucify the passions of it and to deal with it when it comes up instead of uh, agreeing with the fact that it's more... Agreeing that it's more powerful than us because Christ in us is the hope of glory. <laughs> So when you're still struggling with the addictions or besetting sins, um, and God will even, if, if you desire that thing so much that you won't do everything in your power to come to Him every time you struggle with it, um, sometimes He'll give you over to it for a little while to see what it turns you into, to see if you really want that. Uh, Sin waters down our fire, and it bitters the waters that He gives us. It will give us over to pollution of our own soul, so that we'll see the des- how desperate we are in need of His presence and His counsel. Uh, we got to be desperate for what He can do in our lives. He He burns the impurities out of us with his tender love and kindness towards us in the, in the trial, in the fiery trial that we go through. We're praying that, that sin and oppression and unclean spirits are burned out of you through confession and love of the Father. Um, be men and women of confession. Confess your sins one to another and be healed. Um, I know that's that's something that I've struggled with in my life that you have to be perfect or um, that you, people just hold you up to a standard that's not even it's not even attainable. But um, be men and women with confession because that's where we get free. That's that's where we get brokenness and we become real with one another and and. And praise God, this is a place that you can do that. You can confess. And people are not, we're not judging you of anything that you've done. And uh, praise God, we don't want you to judge us of anything that we've done. Uh, if you don't overcome it, the sin that you deal with, your, uh, your, your secret sin, your besetting sins, it will overcome you. This life the life is meant for the overcomer. Jesus didn't die to excuse our sin, but defeat it. Walk in the power, power of the victory over sin, uh, not walking in the license to commit sin through your trial. I'm, I'm going through this, so this is okay. We're really good. Just, just the fleshly things that we are on justifying why we're going to sneak off and sin for a little bit, or just get in anger with somebody. Just speak something that's not not even God. Um, don't walk in the license to, co- to commit sin. Um, we're, we're weak, some of us. We don't know Scripture. Um, and me included, I don't know half of the Scripture I ought to know. We... Um, don't rely on your own experiences um, and, your, and our small memory of the scriptures. We need, uh, we need his interpretation of them to affirm what we do. And it's only the word Christ that has the power to keep you through your trials and to help you overcome the lust of the flesh when you're at your most vulnerable state. 
when there seems to be opposition on every side, um, taking back the ground that you've maybe gained here, taking back uh, the enemy trying to take back um, the ground that you've gained here. Uh, it's only the Word of God that will push back the enemy. It's only the Word of God that will give you surety um, and the power to, to keep moving forward and, and to walk in victory. We need to have brokenness. Um, we, need to, we need to search our hearts. Uh, we need to desire to walk clean, uh, sanctified, holy. Um, the, church, we, the church isn't desiring to burn, burn a pure flame in our hearts as Christ and the prophets did. We, we want heaven, but we don't want heaven on earth. And that's a little bit about what Nikki was talking last night. Heaven on earth is Christ willing and doing Amen. through us, his sons. He's called you friends. He's called you kings. He wants to establish his kingdom in the earth. Um, we have to get serious about prayer, about seeking the face of God in the secret place. Um, Prayer meetings are good, but what's your what's your personal prayer life? Um, it's it's a relationship. It's it's a it's doing business with God alone. Um, we we step into church, but we walk right back out, forgetting Him, reading something uh, that's just flesh. Um, when they go back home. How we love the praise of men more than the praise of God. Um, the Lord's looking for something that He can He can forge to be an instrument of righteousness. He's desiring something pure, something broken in the place of prayer that He can use. Um, something that you, a, a person, a man, a woman, someone who yearns for His heart as He yearns for yours. We don't even have a clue how much the Lord yearns to love on us and to reveal his word, to reveal himself to us. Um, come out from the unclean thing. Uh, stop, stop pleasing the flesh. Stop entertaining it. Stop making, making provision for sin. Um, cut it off. Cut the TV off. Um, be holy as I am holy. Us beholding Christ uh, daily is what's going to change. It's what's going to change us, and it's what it's what's going to change those around us. Is beholding Christ, beholding Him, and becoming changed. Uh, let's turn to First Peter four uh, twelve through nineteen. Overcoming the flesh in our trials. Thank you. Um, these fiery trials he's wanting to bring us through it these fiery trials refine us shape us into his image shape us into an instrument of righteousness 1 Peter 4 verse 12 beloved think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you but rejoice Inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad with exceeding joy. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the Spirit and glory of God resteth upon you. For their part, he is evil spoken of, but on your part, he is glorified. Let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on his behalf. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Verse 19, Wherefore let him that suffer according to the will of God Commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. 
We, we commit our hearts to him by continually recommitting our ways to him, uh, taking care of our heart, paying close attention to what we say, what we're believing, what we're reading, what we're looking at, taking up our cross daily and not being ashamed of the rejection that we experience when we go out of here and speak into other people's lives. Jesus said, if they reject me, they'll reject you. <coughs> the fire is what, it, it breaks us down and it it's in our weakness he is strong. The fire uh, breaks us, melts us, molds. It, it's putting us in his mold where Christ can shape and change us into his, his image. Um, it's, it's why he wants to change you in the circumstance. Maybe things are heating up in your life. Things are, uh, you might have problems on all sides. Maybe things are going great. Um, but are you hearing from God? Are you hearing his word? Is he speaking to you? Um, are you feeling the touch of God, the finger of God? Um, if not, you need to do business with him. We need to be in correct posture towards him in order to hear from him in these coming days. When they melt down the gold and silver and when it forms in the mold, they, they take it out of the fire and shape it, putting it back into the fire until it's pure and it shines. And only through these fires, these fiery trials of life, can we be melted, broken, and shaped to reflect his marvelous light. Um, it's how they get the shine out of the metal, is when they melt it down and take it out of the fire, shape it, and then put it right back in. And this process of doing it brings forth the purest metal that shines, and that's what Christ desires for our hearts. It's what he desires for you, to walk in purity and in holiness. Um, let's turn to Psalm 37. This spoke to my heart today, and I want to read it to y'all. And uh, Psalm 37. Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass, and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord, and do good. Thou shalt dwell in the land, verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass, and he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Um, we can't wait to get out of our trial. Um, I'm wondering when we'll be like, when we'll, I, I want to get to the place where I'm like Paul, and we glory in the tribulation, we glory in our trials, or we're um, seeing it as him working in us and shaping us into his image. It's not always about getting out of this trial into the next one. Um, have peace in the trial. He gives us peace that no man can give. Uh, he gives us the ability to be patient. We need the gift of patience, um, me included. Um, patient with his work, with what he's doing in the earth, with his promises, what he gives you to speak to people, to encourage people to be patient in the promises they have received, and to not get in sin in the lust of the flesh when the promises don't seem like they're coming in our time. Um, verse 7, Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord they shall inherit the earth. Thank you, Jesus. If we, if we just get in church and wait on God to do something, um, what a work He could do. Uh, we need the power of God to come down in our church. Wait on Him. Be still and know that I am God. We might get a lot accomplished. Thank you, Jesus. 
for evil doers, uh, verse nine, for evil doers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. <clears throat> Thou shalt diligently consider his place, or search it out, and they shall not be. But the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. The wicked plotteth against the just, and gnasheth upon him with his teeth. The Lord shall laugh at him, for he seeth that his day is coming. The wicked have drawn out the sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy and to slay such as upright conversation. Their sword shall enter into their own heart, and their bow shall be broken. A little that a righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked. Hope and riches within... Um, it's that inward peace and surety that we're going to have that's going to get us through the trial and give us the hope that we need. Um, verse 16, a little that a righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked. What, um, what, what do we have to fear for these many wealthy men that can influence millions and millions of people at one time? What if we shouldn't be fearing them. We should be... Uh, we should, it's, it's more of a thing to be grasped than the wealth of man. It's more of a thing to be grasped um, of one man getting a hold of God, getting a hold of the heart of God. That man can change a nation. Uh, that man or woman getting a word from the Lord, um, being of a broken and contrite spirit. God can do more through that man uh, than all these wealthy men could be combined in the earth. Um, let's keep reading a little bit. Um, Psalm 37, uh, verse 17. Um, For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholdeth the righteous. The Lord knoweth the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time, and in the days of famine they shall be satisfied. But the wicked shall perish, and the enemies of the Lord shall be as the fat of lambs. They shall consume into smoke. They shall consume away. Praise God, Lord. We, we do ask that you would consume our enemies in the midst of our trials, Lord. He wants to work out those things. If you have demons holding you down, if you have wicked spirits, past sins, he was wanting to burn it all off of you so that you remain, and that soul remain, that inner man, the flesh perish. But the inner man lives forever. He's trying to work and make something honor of honor and of use to his kingdom. Um, to purify, to burn off the things that are just flesh. Uh, to burn off the things uh, that, that weigh it down. Um, let's hope and riches within. Let's turn to 2 Corinthians uh, 4, 6 through 18. 2 Corinthians 4. He's going to refine you through the fire. He's going to bring you through your trials. He's not going to leave you or abandon you. He's going to give you victory from your flesh by learning how to continually take it to the cross, bear your cross, and follow Him. He's going to teach you how to be refined through the fiery trials. To let him take off everything that hinders you, everything that weighs you down. Um, 2 Corinthians uh, 4, starting verse 6. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of the darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellent excellency may Excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. For we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. 
For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then death worketh in us, but life in you. We have the same spirit of faith according as it is written, I believe, and therefore I have spoken. We also believe, and therefore speak, knowing that he which was raised up by the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus, and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might be through the thanksgiving, may redound to the glory of God. For which cause we faint not. And this is my prayer for us, uh, being us who are in the trials that we're in today. Um, who are maybe losing hope, losing heart, or need a word for the trials that we're in, the things that we're suffering through. Um, that we're lacking to see vision or a word for. Verse 16, For which cause we faint not, but through our outward man, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal way to glory, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Fix your eyes on eternity, how heaven, how earthly minded we are. We hear that, that saying, too heavenly minded to be any earthly good. We're, us, as the body, I think sometimes we're so earthly minded, we're of no use to the kingdom. Um, we need to take this serious, folks. Um, this light affliction that we experience, the, the, the trials that we have are nothing com- to be compared with the way of glory that is to be revealed through the sons. Um, it's about him, him changing us in the midst of peril, in the midst of nation rising up against nation, in the midst of uh, everything that they can uh, do in the power of the flesh, the powers that that be. Uh, we have to hope in God and get a word from God for people. Uh, for we can't lose our love for lost people, for lost humanity. We have to continue loving them. It's about Him changing us in the midst and us being Christ, speaking hope to someone who has no hope. Um, speaking life to people who are filling their heads and their minds and their souls with death, whether it's on the TV or what people have said to them. Um, it's, it's not about jumping to the next trial so we can be in comfort. Um, he is our comfort. So um, it shouldn't depend on what we feel in the flesh. It should depend on knowing Him. He is our comfort. He's our peace. Um, him changing us despite the circumstances is hope to others. When others see that you change and you become more like Jesus, um, even when things get worse, that you become more like Christ, you have more peace, you have more revelation, um, that gives them hope. Um, not that everything's uh, necessarily cleaned up and that all your ducks are in a row. Um, it might be that you're persecuted, that you're misunderstood, that people are more apt to reject you, but they're watching, and they will see how you deal with your trials in life. Um, praise God. Let's just pray. Lord, I thank you for this word that you've spoken to us, Lord, that despite what we're going through, what we've been through, Lord, that you know and that you care for us, Lord. Help us to cast our burdens on you today, Lord. All that that's weighing us down, Father, um, that which we're not even capable of doing ourselves, Lord, we pray that you come and, and will and do through us, Father. We just thank you for Jesus, Lord. We thank you for these men and women, Lord. We ask that your spirit would speak to them, Lord. 
I pray that you give them revelation for everything that I've said, Lord. Uh, let it strike their hearts, Lord, and pierce their hearts, Father. Um, finding a way to change their soul, Lord, and to strengthen them in the midst of trial, Lord. We thank you and we praise you, Lord. We honor you today. Jesus. If you feel like um, you need a word for whatever you're going through today, um, if, if you need a touch from God, if you need encouragement, um, if you just need prayer for whatever you're going through, uh, you can just come forward and I'll, and I'll pray for you. Um, everyone else, uh, you can um, be dismissed, but I encourage you to, to stay and, and to pray um, and to intercede for these folks who maybe have a child that they want prayer for. Um, so praise God. Bless you. This is the end of this message. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Thank you.